Welcome, everyone, to episode number five of the Deep Drive in the Left Field podcast. My name is Jack, otherwise known as MLB Nerds on Instagram, and I'm here with my co-host, Ryan Garcia, otherwise known as Ryan Garcia ESM on Twitter. Today, we're going through a few things, uh, including the two uh, biggest uh, acquisitions recently with the Trevor Bauer uh, signing with the Los Angeles Dodgers, Marcel Luzuna resigning with the Atlanta Braves, and then we also have a trade candidate that we think could really benefit from a potential uh, shift in Major League Baseball, I don't know if you want to call it rules or uh, regulations. We're going to be doing our uh, trivia and also our, all of us, including uh, Jackson and James, who are the producers of this podcast, we're going to be doing our right field lists. So uh, let's get it. As there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, it will be a home run. Starting off today's podcast, we have the Los Angeles Dodgers signing Trevor Bauer to a three or two year. Technically, it's a, it's a three year deal. The third year is a uh, player option worth $17 million, but the cumulative deal is worth uh, two years, $85 million, with a club option worth $17 million at the end. Um, Bauer is almost certainly to decline that option if he pitches, you know, remotely solid over the next two years, uh, in which he'll be making $85 million, 40 in 2021 and 45 in 2022. I think Ryan and I have pretty similar thoughts on the deal, though I might be a bit more, I don't, I don't, actually, I don't, I'm not entirely sure, but I would think that we have pretty similar thoughts. So I'll just uh, kick us off real quick. I think this is a very, it's a weird signing for the Dodgers. The Dodgers are not known to overpay for people. And regardless if this is a two-year deal, it is absolutely an overpay. Giving a player like Trevor Bauer, who outside of 20, uh, 20 and 2018 has been a pretty mediocre pitcher, uh, like $45 million, it's really not great. Obviously, we're not going to completely ignore 2020 and 2018. He's definitely an above-average pitcher. He's very good, don't get me wrong. I don't want to call him like, I don't want to say he's bad, even though I dislike him heavily. Uh, you could say I hate him. I don't want to say that, but I don't like, I definitely don't like him. Uh, but I, he's not an elite pitcher by any means, and he's not going to be worth 40 to $45 million in a yearly basis, even if it's only for two years. Uh, I would assume the Dodgers do this just because they don't really give a flying fuck about the luxury tax, and they missed out on stars like Harper on short-term deals, so they figured they'd give it to uh, Bauer. I don't like the move personally. I think they were probably better off and not re-signing Turner, because they might not re-sign Turner at this point, which would make their team you know, worse, just given that Turner is definitely a significantly better player than Trevor Bauer. And uh, they let go of guys like Jack Peterson, who didn't really have much of a place on the team just because they have A.J. Pollock and other outfield depth. Um, but at the end of the day, I just don't like the signing. So, Ryan, what are your thoughts? Well, actually, I, I think I'm a little bit uh, more uh, lenient towards the Dodger on this because it's an AAV uh, towards the luxury tax of $34 million. And here's the thing. Like you said, the Dodgers don't care about the luxury tax. That's one big thing. Two, I, in 2019, uh, I'm pretty sure Bauer pitched hurt. Uh, so I don't know if I should take that too much of a, I don't know if I should take 2019 and say he's bad and he's not going to perform well. I think there's enough uh, on his spin rate because uh, he's uh, eating a more balanced breakfast. That's what I'll call it. Um, he's going to be able to maintain that spin rate, the velocity. He's going to probably still be as good as he, not as good as he was in 2018 and 2020 because those, he overperformed a lot in 2018. His home runs of fly ball percentage was really low. Uh, and then in 2020, his uh, competition wasn't that great. But if he's around a three ERA starter and he has uh, durability, which he's always been, he's always been able to pitch um, quite a lot of innings, then at that point, he's going to be worth $34 million, most likely, which is what the AAV is towards the luxury tax, which all the Dodgers cares, care about. That's why they gave him that option. Both parties know he's probably declining it. And so they really just threw it in there just to lower the uh, AAV. And I'm pretty sure uh, Babber was on par with that. He wants to hit free agency at some point. I think he's going to be able to perform well enough to uh, be able to decline that option. I, I think basically you're going to be able to gauge this contract and how well it was if he declines or accepts the offer. If he declines the offer, this was a massive success, and the Dodgers did amazing. If he picks up the offer, the Dodgers are in, just in an awful situation with his contract. It all, both parties want him to decline that contract, uh, that, that third year. It gets really bad if he picks up that third year because then – that means he's not good enough to make the money he would have made his option year. But I, I, I'm a little more, I like this move a little bit more for the Dodgers than you. And I think it's just because of the AAV for the luxury tax and the fact that I think he's going to be still a pretty good starter. I'm pretty sure James put him in his top 10. And while I didn't put him top 10, I definitely considered him for that. So I do think, you know, for a top 15 starter, uh, it's a little bit much, but Hey, he can move up the rankings. And I, I, I do like this move kind of, I give them a B plus on it. Not really like an, a C or an F. 
Well, if we're talking about injuries, and if you're saying, you know, you know, he pitched through 2019 injuries, then we should, you know, not count it or we should count it less. Um, then why are we not talking about James Paxton, who's been injured, uh, but even pitching through some injuries in 2019, uh, 2018, since 2017, he's been spectacular. He's been fantastic. And he's going to, you know, get like fucking a year at this point, I would guess around $15 million, which is, I think, significantly better contractual value than what Bauer is getting. Why are we not considering, you know, him as a potential better candidate to knock down sort of what this Bauer deal is? Because at the end of the day, deals are dictated by the market. And though, uh, though you know, you can't just like look at a deal uh, by itself and say it's good or bad. You have to look at the other market value, uh, the market value, look at other options. So for a guy like James Paxton, who is going to be $30 million cheaper, maybe a bit less, like 25, uh, who's also at injury issues, but, uh, at, you know, at the end of the day, uh, I, I'm just, I, I just think it's not a good deal. I give it probably like a C, C minus just because of the options available. I wouldn't give it an F just because Bauer can be very good. But I, like I said, at the end of the day, uh, I, I think there are much better options. Well, the thing is with Paxton, that's not a, at all a fair comparison. One guy got injured in 2019. The other guy got injured in 2020. And Paxton has been rumored to have lost velocity. Um, there was, an, I think there was an interview one of the, uh, one, one, with like an, one of these insiders. I think it's like called Clap or something like that. I don't know his full name. I think like Clap, Bob, yeah. Clap. Bob Clap. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he said that the Yankees didn't want to bring, are not likely to bring back Paxton due to concerns with his injury history. If the Yankees are concerned with injury history, that tells you all you need to know about what's going on with Paxton. They probably know the most about Paxton. And there's definitely a lot of information to support the idea that Paxton is not going to be as good as he was before. Bauer, there's not that same thing. It's a completely different injury situation. Bauer showed up and showed out in 2020. I don't know. I would give, I would have given DeGrom or Darvish a sign over him, but he's still fantastic in 2020. And the, the Dodgers know they're very analytical. Um, Bauer has obviously done something to increase his spin rate drastically. I wonder and if what. he maintains it, you know, it was a, it was a balanced diet. Balanced um, breakfast, you know, he does great training. Great, yeah, just weight training for sure. You know, yeah, sure. Yeah, no, I, I know he's been crushing those five by fives, man. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's like dragging the truck. And it's like, yep. thank you, one of his videos, he's dragging yes, the truck. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, that's all good. But I think it's two completely different injuries. You're comparing apples to oranges here. This is not the same time. This is Paxton's more of a Kluber situation. Bauer's more of a, yeah, he pitched. He's more of a, I got, I pitched to injury in 2019, but in 2020, I was perfectly healthy and I looked fantastic. And the Dodgers are really good with scouting. The Dodgers know what they're doing. I'm not going to, you know, this is not a move where I'm like, the Dodgers don't know what they're doing. They're like, if this was a team like the uh, Mets who did it, I would question it because the Mets have, don't have the track record of uh, player development and scouting that the Dodgers do. The Dodgers have amazing scouting, a major, amazing player development. The last, they know what they're doing with their, their, their salary, their payroll, and they're able to take more risks, obviously, because they have a larger payroll and they make boatloads of money. But I don't think they would give out this contract if they didn't know what they were getting. Yeah, I, I just, I understand. I didn't mean to necessarily directly compare them. Uh, I meant more like if you're going to talk about, you know, Bowers 2019 injury, I wouldn't just, you know, neglect it if that makes sense. And yeah, I, I kind of agree with you that, you know, making, it makes me kind of question the Dodgers, but it also makes me question, you know, is Bauer legit? You know, is Bauer part of the deal he has to supply their entire pitching staff with the poor and substance he uses? Like it's, it's, uh, it's going to be pretty interesting. And, you know, if we see a spike in spin rate with all the Dodgers, which they're already particularly high, but if we see a spike, we'll know exactly what happened because it happened with the Reds as well. Um, I, I just, I, I think that, I, I don't, even though the Dodgers are so analytically driven and I trust their front office, it's hard to make this, it, it's really hard to look past the surface is that he's not worth it, you know? Well, for them, it's a $34 million a year. He's a pitcher who's going to come in and yeah, yeah, he's a third starter. And everyone's like, well, you're paying $34 million for a third starter. Yeah, because he's in a rotation with Clayton Kershaw, Walker Bueller. That's like if, that's like if, uh, you know, you say, oh, the Mets are paying, uh, the Mets are going to pay uh, a their their um Thor I guess is considered their three or Strowman's considered they're gonna pay their third starter eighteen yeah. million yeah because they have Carrasco and Degrom ahead of them like I th and and also the career ERA thing is such a weird argument because he's clearly not the same pitcher yeah people are um, comparing him and Tanner Roark that's, that's such a stupid uh, yo if you repost something oh, look at their win loss record and the ERA and their WHIP just say you don't know baseball like you could just tweet that and we'll I'll get the same message you know what I mean okay. like I, I don't want to be harsh. But that's like, you could just tweet, I don't know baseball. I get the exact same information. Like, it's such a weird comparison. And I hate Bauer. I do not like the person Bauer is. I despise who he is off the field. I despise his agent. I despise the clientele. 
Her, um, Luba represents patently false. <laughs> I can't believe you, know you got caught with that. How did how did that happen to you? Dude, I was I was like that was legendary hysterically, and I, I she how do you tell me that I'm like committing a crime and then block me right after so I can't see what she told me? That's I think a w. that's probably the funniest part about it. But, that's a W. Yeah. That's a W. I, I, I consider it a W. Like, that's, right? that's, a, that's a fat W right and there. And I think the, the, the funny, not the funniest, because it's terrible, but like the, the craziest part about it is, you know, I said rapist when it was sexually assault. Like, uh, it's like, that. congratulations. Like, you're yeah, like exactly. slightly <laughs> worse. Like, yeah, you're still a piece of human garbage. Like, congratulations, <laughs> I guess. Like, yeah. Anyway. You want an award? It's like, if, it's like, if, like, yeah, you know, like, I, yeah, I know I broke my leg, but it's not amputated. It's just fractured in every single place. Like, it's still like, okay. Anyways, uh, Point is Bauer, I think, is going to be a good starting pitcher. At worst, he's a you know three to let's say let's say he has a three five year. Let me go completely uh, non uh, conservative here. And he pitches one hundred ninety innings. He's going to be fine. So that's kind of my take on that. All right, I think that's enough. Done with Bauer. Okay, moving on to Ozuna. Wait one second. I have to boot this kid out, Mark. Moving on to our next big acquisition, the. Atlanta Braves signed or re-signed Marcel Azuna to a four-year contract worth $60 million. Wow. Uh, you know, my initial steal. take is this shit was a steal. You know, Azuna, even if he's a fucking, you know, DH, he's still putting up two and a half wins likely. At a minimum, you know, he's putting up two and a half wins in a 60-game uh, season. I'm sorry, not 60, 162 games, which is more than going to pay for $15 million a year. I'm surprised no team threw him a better offer than that. You know, the Dodgers wanted to, apparently on a short-term deal similarly with Bauer, but you know, I'm, I'm kind of surprised the Mets potentially didn't throw their hat in the ring. If the DH is going to come back, which we don't know. Baseball is such a, a shit show, not baseball in general, but Rob Manfred, you know, so I, I, I think this is a steal for the Braves. I, I really don't see this, how there's any other way to say that it possibly isn't, you know, Ozuna, like I said, even if he DHs, I think he's definitely capable of playing left field at a slightly below average level, which is more valuable than DH. But uh, even if he just DHs, he's putting up more than two and a half wins uh, per season. And I, I think it's pretty much undisputable that this is a steal. And I'm pretty sure Ryan also agrees with me, but let's hear what he has to say. Ryan, what do you think? I think it's like a thing with the Braves now. They get to get like these amazing players and either extend them or sign them to such amazing contracts. Think about this. Like with the, the Acuna contracts, like what, eight years, 100 million? Albies is like, is like 7 million AAV. And now you get a, a Zuna at what was it, sixty million for four years with a fifth year to be eighty million or something like that. That's, I mean, that's a highway robbery. This is an elite hitter, and even if at the out left field position, let's say he plays left field, right, and he puts up pretty bad defensive numbers, he's not the worst defender in baseball. He's no Nick Castellanos out there and def defensively. He's probably going to put up a negative five, a negative four outs above average, which with his bat makes him completely worth it. This. This dude's an amazing hitter. And again, left field defensively really doesn't matter too much. But he's an amazing hitter. The Braves get, if the Braves lost Ozuna, I would have really questioned their ability to be a World Series contender because their offense is, is very lackluster without I Ozuna. Hmm? I still question it, but you know. I do as well. But I think I'm a little, I, I'm not concerned about their lineup as much as I was before. I do think they need another bat in there. But I do like how you got Freeman, Acuna, and uh, Ozuna in that middle of the lineup. That's what you, that's, that's a loaded the lineup um the pitching is going to be hopefully pretty good for them i think morton's a good addition they're going to get soroka back and soroka he's overperformed his peripherals but he's still a solid pitcher um and then you have ian anderson who's very talented max freed i don't know if he's going to be an, an era merchant or a because i know in 2019 he he underperformed and in 2020 overperformed uh but freed is solid uh, Soroka is solid. Ian Anderson is, is pretty exciting. If you look at his pitch mix, it's pretty good. Um, you know, this is a team that now they got their guy back in Ozuna. The only thing that's a little concerning though, is if they are penny pinching on Ozuna, does that mean that they're done for the off season? Because if it is, then I'm sorry, but the Mets walked out of this off season getting significantly better. I need to, you lost shit. You're losing da Darren O'Day because the Yankees signed him. Melanson's still a free agent. Um, Green is still a free agent. Those aren't two elite relievers, but those are two guys who contributed a lot to this team over the last uh, year and a half, because I, I, I think Melanson was got, they got him in the 2019 deadline and in green, I think they did as well. You know, they have to bring back some of the relievers. Their bullpen's looking weak. You know, this better not be the last move. This is a great move, but it cannot be the last move for them. 
Yeah, I agree. I, I, I as for free, by the way, he had like a 4.4 home run per fly ball ratio. Uh, so that's not sustainable at all. But um, he, he's probably somewhere in the middle of that uh, 2019 and 2020 season. And some quick, you know, breaking news here from Ken. The Cardinals are bringing back Yachty. They're pretty close. So uh, congrats to Yachty on getting a contract that they're likely not deserved. We'll cover that probably in the next podcast. But uh, with Ozuna, like I was saying, and like you were saying, steal, uh, even if he doesn't play good defense, still a steal. $50 million is nothing. Over four years, I think it's even better when you give him that long-term deal, you can get him for cheaper. But, uh, you know, obviously luxury tax matters a lot, and he's probably going to be very solid. I, I, I don't know if I'd necessarily call him an elite hitter. I'd probably somewhere put him in that very good, just because I don't think 2020 is a full accurate representation of what kind of hitter he is. Uh, but uh, I, I'm good, you know, yeah, still, I think it's a steal. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, yeah, you're right. I probably exaggerated with elite hitter. Um, you know, I probably reserve that tier for the Juan Soto's, Christian Yelich's, Mike Trout's, Cody Bellinger's. Uh, well, Cody Bellinger's right because when Cody Bellinger isn't right, uh, what? <laughs> I, I, when Cody Bellinger is right, I feel like I should have emphasized that. Like 2017 and 20, if we if, if it's 2017. Or- 19 Bellinger it's a really good hitter uh depends on what he is feeling like because I don't know what it is with uh even years he sucks during those years uh I guess the healthy Aaron Judge in that tier as well now I think about it's probably uh it's probably a very small tier I I think I probably jumped the gun on elite but I I think the tier you put him in with good slash very good is a little more accurate I jumped the gun there but I think it's a good I I agree with you good acquisition but they can't be done they really can't be done because I think the Mets in a five game or seven game series could molly whop them Moving on to our next topic of the day, we're going to be talking about this pitcher for the Detroit Tigers who is going to benefit significantly, uh, immensely, however you want to say it, from the uh, balls being quote-unquote de-juiced. An article from Washed reporter Ken Rosenthal earlier today uh, said that the balls are going to be apparently de-juiced um, from the 2020-2019 season, uh, and we're supposed to expect a, um, a drop in home run uh, rates. This guy plays for the Detroit Tigers. Uh, even though it's one of the least uh, hitter-friendly ballparks in baseball, he slowly gives, gives up a fucking a fuck ton amount of home runs. Matthew Boyd, who uh, he, he he's really uh, I, Matthew Boyd is so con- confusing. And at the end of the day, the thing with Boyd is that you know he he is the makings to be a very solid pitcher. He just gives up so many home runs, and I'm a believer that the majority of uh, the time uh, home runs are out of the pitcher's control, and. But Matthew Boyd, this guy just takes it to a new level. What, Ryan, what's his um, home run for, for fly ball ratio? Okay, so uh, I, do you want the 18 to Let's 20 get, yeah. sample size? Because that's 15.3%. But, but from 19 to 20, it's 18.6%. That's So like nice. Edwin Diaz in 2019, but over a much larger sample size. Yes. This dude, like... I don't know what it is. Like, I think ba- like the juice baseballs just hate him because it spiked 7% after 2018 because it was around 11%, which is pretty league average. And I mean, I just, dude, that dude has an amazing slider. He has, his fastball isn't that hard, but his breaking pitches are amazing. Like if the ball's deadened and he can just focus more on getting those swings and misses, I, I think we're talking about a guy who could be about, who, his his peak is, his not his peak, his ceiling is Patrick Corbin. His floor is very, very low, very, very low. Anyways, I you know this is gonna be a pretty quick topic because we kind of just explained why a team would want him. Um, but as a Yankees fan, I definitely want him on my team. You know, I think our rotation is very good. We have some of the best rotation depth in the league, and getting him would make it even better. I feel like the Mets should be going, you know, going out and getting him. A team like the Red Sox should really go out and get him. You know, really any team. I don't see any team that couldn't use Matt Boyd as their fifth starter. Like, there's really no team besides maybe the Dodgers. But like at the end of the day, Padres. You, you know, Padres, too, at the end of the day, though, uh, with, with Boyd, his ceiling is so high, and he's like, going to be pretty dirt cheap at the end of the day just because his his, his, uh, his contract is, is what, two more years of arbitration, and he's not been very good over the past years because of home run rates. So uh, I, I think a team should definitely just go get him right now before the balls are officially dejuiced because I think more teams will be on him. You know, I'd send Brian Cashman a message again, but it's $10, and he aired me the last time when I wanted him to get <laughs> you, left me on red. So that was pretty sad. Uh, you know, apparently he gets back to some people late, but it's been five days and I'm kind of losing hope here. So that was a waste of $10. But um, yeah, Ryan, what do you have to say? I was going to say, look out for is that team or the Rays. Those two teams can turn around a pitcher like any other franchise. And if one of those two teams get him, mark my words, 
that you the days you spent laughing at people in 2019 saying hey we should trade for matt boyd and then you went back on the replies after he sucked in 2020 and said you wanted that boy <laughs> and then he gets when he gets traded if he gets traded to the astros or rays you're gonna wish your team either a was more analytical or b you wish you were an astros or rays fan uh and he's gonna be really really good uh i promise you it it ends it all depends on where he goes he cannot go to another garbage organization it has to be a good analytical organization because I I think the Astros and the Rays are the two teams that can fix him. He has the size and limit for this guy. Moving on to our next segment of today's podcast, we have top 10 right fielders. Uh, we're going to just go around. Similarly, how did we did this with um, third base, uh, excuse me, starting pitchers. Uh, I'll go, Ryan will go, James will go, Jackson will go, and we'll just go around and we're going to each say what our uh, placement is at each spot. At number 10, I have Giants right fielder Mike Yastrzemski. Ryan, who do you have? At number 10, I have Jason Hayward of the Chicago Cubs. James Valentinas, who do you have? I agree with Ryan here. I have Hayward at 10. And Jackson De De Rosario, excuse me, Del Rosario. Who do you have at number 10? I have uh, Yaz Jr., or I guess it's Yaz, what is it, nephew? (laughs) Yaz's grandnephew. I think it's grandchild, right? Oh, it's his grandson. Yeah. At number nine, I have Minnesota Twins right fielder Max Kepler. Shout out to Isaac. Who do you have? In I that? also have Max Kepler at number nine. So we do. good, good, we good, 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 good listening. Uh, I have Mike Yastrzemski at nine. And Jackson. I have Mr. Alex Verdugo at number nine. At number eight, I have Houston Astros right fielder or projected right fielder, Kyle Tucker. I have Mike Yastrzemski at eight. James, who do you have? Oh, shit. I have a uh, twins right fielder, Max Kepler, at eight. And Jackson. I have Edwin Rio Sr., Joey Gallo. At number seven, I have Yankees or future Yankees right fielder, but current Texas Rangers right fielder, Joey Gallo. Follow my Twitter at Joey Gallo two NYY. Anyways, right here I you go. Also have definite future Yankee right fielder Joey Gallo at number seven. I have Texas Ranger Joey Gallo at number seven. And I have Max Kepler, the German, the German beast. At number six, we have, or I have, uh, New York Mets right fielder Michael Conforto, otherwise known as a bat- batting average in balls and play merchant in 2020. But Ryan, who do you have? I also have Michael Conforto at six. So do I. I have I have him there too. I'm assuming our, our lists are all going to be very similar, except for a minor change because Jackson's a Yankees hitter at the top. No, but he he has Judge higher than I do. So yeah, we were, I didn't say it was Judge. You know, Clint Frazier could be playing right field next year. Clint yeah, Frazier, yeah. top five. At number five, I have Philadelphia Phillies right fielder Bryce Harper. I also have Maga Man Harper. I do too. I have Bryce Harper Resurgence Tour 2021 incoming. It's going to happen. At number four, I have uh, Atlanta Braves right fielder Ronald Acuna Jr. I also have the very fun outfielder to watch at four. Uh, I do too. I also have Acuna at four. I also have Ronald Acuna Jr. at four. At number three, I have Washington Nationals outfielder Juan Soto, who's going to be playing right field this year with the acquisition of Kyle Schwarber. Schwarber, excuse me. Ryan, who do you have? At number three, I have the 2021 MVP, Aaron Judge. At number three, I have a guy who won't be the 2021 MVP, Aaron Judge. At number three, I will have a guy who's going to be the 2021 MVP, but it's Jonathan Soto. Number two, I have uh, 2021 MVP New York Yankees right fielder Aaron Judge. At number two, I have the greatest hitter since, uh, wow, no, it's not even true. Uh, He's a very good hitter, Juan Soto. (laughs) Uh, I also have Soto. And I almost agree with best hitter since Bonds, if that's what you were going to say. No, I was going to say since like, I was going to say it's like Trout, but like Trout isn't even that long ago. (laughs) And I have uh, Mr. Not Top 10, Aaron Judge. And number one, we all have Mookie Betts. We don't have to even talk about that. Yeah. Um, I actually have Clint Frazier first. No, I'm kidding. You have Clint Frazier. (laughs) 
Uh, former Red Sox, current Dodger. You know. Can I you, can I give a uh, an honorable mention to Gerald, Mitch Haniger? Uh, go ahead. Yeah, facts. I want. Uh, yes, that's facts. I'll, I'll go first real quick with my honorable mention. I have um, who I have is my honorable mention. I have uh, Boston Red Sox outfielder Alex Verdugo, who's potentially playing some center field, but if not, he's my uh, honorable mention for Larry Clay. Brian, who you have? Uh, I had Haniger barely missing it, but I also had Kyle Tucker in consideration as well, and Verdugo too. Those three guys just kind of neck and neck. I had the two guys that he just said, uh, not Verdugo, but that's because he's a center fielder. And I also would give a quick honorable mention to Cassianos, but he's just, no. his defense is too bad. No. Yeah. And Jackson? Uh, my honorable mentions were Kyle Tucker and Mitch Haniger. All right. So really our biggest difference here on this list is I'm, higher on t- Tucker than the majority of you guys. And I can understand why you're not as high as, as you are on him as I am. I just think his 2020 production uh, is somewhat sustainable. Let me get his fan graphs up real quick. Uh, no, I think you're just high in general. I wish I had. I'm not high ever, but I've never actually done drugs recreationally. You shouldn't do that either. Uh, in 2020, <laughs> why did you make it so do serious? It, do it, do it. <laughs> in 2020, yeah. no, I'm just messing around. In 2020, in a 303 batting average on balls in play, and I regret not putting Tim Anderson lower because I'll never hear the end of it uh, until he regresses. Which... Yeah, there's there's no way he should be all top right, right. 10 hey, or 15. We'll get that later. We'll get that later. We'll get to that Please. later. <laughs> I'm all I'm all I'm all over it. Let's go. 303 batting average on balls in play, which tells me though in a small sample size, uh, I don't know if he'll be able to uh, put up a 126 WC plus. If he did, I'd probably have him around the six range just because his defense is also pretty solid. Um, but I, I have Tucker at seven or eight. Did I have him? I know I have him at eight, excuse me. Uh, and I, I think he could be anywhere from eight to pretty much 12. I have no problem with Hayward being over him. I have no problem with any of those guys that have been mentioned over him. Verdugo, I, I could see it. I don't really, like, actually, I don't know about Verdugo, but the other guys, I could see it. Um, as for, uh, the rest of them, do you guys have any argument with, with Tucker? Why do you guys not have him even seen enough or, or what? Probably because he's only played 108 games in the league. Okay. That's- and also that his first, what, he was not very good last year. Yeah, I think it's a little, I, I would not put him. Plus in no, he was good last year. It was just only 72 plate appearances. Like, he's never played a bad season or played, like, he's bad played. games, but. He hits the ball hard, but. Yeah, Zips has him as at 100, 121 WRC plus, and I'm not all for 100% projections like some other people are, but I think it does mean something, so. Those projections are always wrong. That's not true, but they're they're not always a hundred percent right. Is what you're saying, and that's with any projection system, you can't always be a hundred percent right. Um, any other thing besides the the Soto Judge thing? I, I'm so glad Jackson is finally getting rid of his Yankee bias just for once. You know, he's incredibly biased. Oh my God. No, uh, it's I I think he's a great player. He's just not a top ten player in baseball. He's not top ten. He's top. He's he's top ten, but he's not top. You know. He's top three, whatever. Okay. He's at you, best he, eight. he is not at top three. Top seven, at best eight. Put him, I don't really know if you can put him any lower than seven. You can name easily seven. I'd put him up. Well, all right, like name or we're not I don't know it. if you can name seven. I, I can get seven. Right, right. Like, like ready? Seven. All right. Trout, all right. Betts, Rendon, yeah. Bregman, yeah. Cole, yeah. DeGrom, Yelich. Right, oh, wait, oh, wait, tell me, tell me, tell me. Pitchers as high. My, um, I did my. That's I, fine. My no, that's totally yeah. fine. That, yeah, I don't have a problem with that. It's like. I, I just I don't think I value pitchers like I had Degrom at twelve and Cole at ten. People for some reason think like a two spot difference is you know no because like, you put yeah. it's because you put Chris Sale nine it's because you put yeah Chris Sale put that's why it's because you put a guy who hasn't played in half a year and a half. You read these com- I read all of them like five hundred comments. This is what I posted yesterday. I read every single fucking comment. I respond see to a lot of them. anyone who heard you earlier say I've never I've never used recreational drugs like they're like no that well that was a fucking lie all right because you put Chris Sale not that right? that's, that's an Sale absolute lie. lie that's a myth that is a myth there's a lie all right you know what fine forget Chris Sale <laughs> <laughs> nobody gives a flying fuck about Chris Sale's place besides a few people I like, do dude there are a solid 200 comments where the fuck is the Grom where's the Grom you clown you, you're doing drugs recreational like I you know that no no they don't add them. The last part, but I, I think that you know, I, I think DeGrom at 12 is, is very fair, uh, especially because my highest. Why are you pretending to do drugs with it? <coughs> Chris Hill's <laughs> top 10. <laughs> that's the only way that comes up, bro. That's the only way that happens. I'm sorry, you had to admit something, bro. Okay, you don't have to, you'll be woke when he wins signing in 2022, but uh, 
Okay, you said 2022. Okay, in 2022. It's yeah, two years. years. Okay, Zan, uh, Zan, Wander Franco's top 100 because he's going to be a really good player in 2022. All right, but that's not but Wander Franco. No, 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 no
I don't think you can't. I don't not a big believer in then just looking at the outs above average. Like, I know, you know I understand, but I'm just saying, like we're we're not talking about you know the best defender in baseball. We're not talking about Harrison we're Bader here. About Mookie Betts. Five. We're talking. We are t- potentially. We're talking about potentially, but he's injury prone. His offensive metrics just haven't been the same as a bunch of other guys in his position. And again, I am just making a devil's advocate argument because I don't think it's crazy oh. to have him out of your top five. I don't think it's crazy to have him out of your top three. And I put him more in the seven, eight, nine range. And I'm a big Yankee fan. I love Aaron Judge. He's my favorite player on the New York Yankees. But at some point, you can't, just because I love Aaron Judge and I love the Yankees doesn't mean I'm going to start making arguments just to favor Aaron Judge to make him look better. He's a very, very good baseball player. And if he's healthy this year, he can't, he will be, if he's healthy this year and plays how he usually does, he's going to be a top five player undoubtedly. But he hasn't done it yet. We're talking about if, if he can, when he can, if he can in 2020, 21, if, when, what, all that stuff. He hasn't done it yet. So that's the argument. Aaron Judge's ceiling. He's a top two player in baseball. But that doesn't no. matter. It doesn't. Okay. okay. His that's ceiling is not higher than that. When you talk about Bieber, three, though, what's Shane Bieber's ceiling? Done. What's Shane Bieber's ceiling? What's Shane Bieber's ceiling? Is it a top two pitcher in baseball? I think his ceiling is a top. Is that fair to say Shane Bieber's ceiling is a top? Yes. Shane Bieber. Okay. Yeah. And he's and what did he do last year? He had an amazing season in 2019. Was amazing as well, right? I don't. I don't think Judge is a, is better than Betts. What I'm. What I'm. No, saying, I understand. No, 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 no. I know you're not saying that. What, what but saying, I'm just saying you're talking about ceilings, and ceilings aren't rankings. We need to. What have they done? What are they Judge, right now? 27. All right. Let, this is the but you're projecting. I'm you're, you're projecting what he's going to be. Even though it was a long time ago, the reason I'm bringing it up is because a 26 uh, 2020 Mickey Mouse 18 he got drilled in the wrist 19. Okay, that's over, fair. No, no, you're you're, you're right. I, I agree with you that I think the injuries have been Mickey Mouse ones. What I'm, but I, 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 I don't mean to be, you know, I don't mean to be saying the exact, I don't mean to, you know, keep, you know, repeating myself here. But what I'm trying to say is if Judge is healthy, which he, if he can be, it's an if, it's an if, it's an if, but big if. healthy. Has he done it though? Has he done it in the last three seasons? That's all we're asking. The same well, season, the has he done seasons, it? Yes, because 2017 was technically one of the last three seasons because 2020 was 16. Okay. How many times he's done it in the last? Are you going to say seasons? that that doesn't Time count? Out. But then you're going to put Kyle Tucker at eight. Yeah, that's a little. Kyle Tucker is and... Kyle Tucker's also a bit different. Okay. I mean, the reason why I said why because he doesn't uh, play for the Yankees. Oh. What? He was the oh. Wait, what are you talking about? It, no, I'm, no bias. Jack, I'm, let me ask you a question. The last three and a half seasons, how many seasons has Aaron Judge played 150 games in the last three and a half seasons? I know the answer. I know the answer. Go. One. Okay. What has he done? How many seasons does he have with a 150 or higher weighted runs created plus? How many? I think it's, I don't know. One. one. It is one. The answer is one. How, four when seasons, was that by the way, not three. Oh, yeah. Three and a half. Excuse me. Uh, four. I get whatever number we're going to use, right? And what year was that? Was that 2019 or 2018? No, it was 2017. So the yeah. farthest back, the lowest weight out of all of them. That's the argument they're making. You can project what he's going to do. You can say he can. You can say if. You can say what if. What if he does this? When he does that? That doesn't matter what he did, what he is doing, what everyone else is doing in comparison to him. That's all. That's what matters right now. If we're talking about projections, we could. That's a whole different argument. We're not talking about projections. Not, projections. Considering any projections, because my. List I'm not has, saying we're not considering any projections, but can you honest to God say? What's, okay, well, if you want to consider projections, then Zips only has him at a four-win player next year. Yeah. So. No, this, I, they, even not, Zips doesn't project them playing as many games, right? I'm, I'm, how, I'm, how many I'm, games I'm, is Zips projecting having? It, it projects him at 499 games, but it also says the whole. 499 games are a plate appearances. Are plate appearances? Yeah, but, even even they don't even project him to play that many games. No, I'm not talking about Zips projections in general. I'm talking about. Your own projections? projections based kind of? on personal projections based on what he's done in the past okay. and if he can stay healthy going forward. And, and he what been- he's done in the past is not stay healthy. Yeah. That, that's why I'm putting him in two separate entities because I think he can stay healthy. Right. I, I, think, but- I think 2020, look, if 2020, if he plays 100 games, you know what, fuck it. You know, he's not a top five player. There's no, I pretty much lose all hope there. He's playing 100 games. It is what it is. If he plays point, 150, I, I'll move him up. Yeah. I'm not ready to, I'm not ready to, you know, say he's not going to play. You know, there's no reason to think he won't outside of the fact that, you know, 2020, you know, 2019, he had a bad injury. 2018, he missed like what? The 30-ish games? Yeah. But that's the second. No, he is, missed 50 games. Yeah. I, I think the issue is everyone in this call. Yeah. 20, oh, I thought you said 2018. No, 2018, I'm not counting. That was a hit in the wrist. That does not count uh, to me. At least. But he didn't play. It does count. If you're no, okay. If you're talking about injury prone, is what I'm saying. No, I'm not. I'm not saying he's injury prone. I'm saying he I, hasn't I done enough saying. to be I a top three saying. player. I know baseball. what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. I understand you're not calling him injury prone. 
And I'm saying that he is not injury. I'm saying that in 20. Is he top three weighted runs created plus? I'm saying in two, you I'm, keep making the same argument, Ryan. We're not. Yeah, we're kind of what I'm saying in tw- I, I'm trying to say like, if he's going to be top six in weighted runs created plus, right? Mm-hmm. Which I think is very you know attainable for him. That's, and that's fair. Be an elite defender. Okay. Uh, and he's going to play 150 games. Yeah, if he does all I, that. Yeah, no, 100. percent no, I'm not ruling it out that he's not. I, I don't want to rule it out. Here. I'm, but I'm, I'm just saying he hasn't done it. That. No, no, I understand what you're saying. And I understand, I guess our lists are made a bit differently. And the same with all of you guys. You know, if I was making the list on your criteria, I'd probably have them around seven, eight. But my list has something to do with a bit of projecting. And also the fact that I make exceptions for different players, just because not, I'm not, like, that sounds really biased. But what I'm it saying is, I, like Correa, I have Correa very high. higher. Than I don't need there. No reason. You don't have to agree with me, but I'm keeping it consistent in terms of players who have been injured but you know, can I, I think can stay healthy? Like they're, they're like Stanton. Stan, I've kind of given up on the you know he's going to be healthy, and at this point, yeah, it's because it's the oblique strain every fucking day and a bicep. Strain, it's, it's the same injury yeah. over and over and over yeah. again. So that, it's like but that gives me a little bit of hope with Judge because that's been like nagging. Like it's like a knee problem or an oblique problem, but it has been something. One thing I, I will say though is yeah. it's crazy that the Yankees have two guys in the top 10 on the right, on our right fielders list. It's like they have judge and Gallo. That's crazy. I didn't, yeah, I mean, gonna, that's, that's, that's amazing. I mean, well, Gallo moved to like what left field and the center field. No, 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 no. He'll center play center field. field. He plays center. But yeah. let, that's not part of the, that's not, that's, that's, that's a, that's a fantasy. That's not a he moved to like what top, top, what top two. To, no, not top two. Fuck he, no, what? you put him in center field. No, you're putting him in center field. Top to the dome. I'm putting him in. Why would you put him in left field? He's a better defender than Aaron Hicks. You put Hicks in left field. You put Hicks in left field, put him in center field. Yeah, Hicks but Gallo like a, is not a top two center fielder. No, I know. I, I, I regret he's it when one, I said You're right. That, right? No, he's, he's, better, than, he's better than Mike Trout. What are you talking about? He's at least like four he's or five. Really better than Mike Trout. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What does Mike Trout even do? Exactly. Yeah, Mike Trout Gallo fun. in New York would be like 70 home Mike runs. Mike Trout's so. injury. <laughs> yo, Gallo, Gallo, yo, Gallo every at bat. Every fly ball he pulls will be a home run at Yankee Stadium. He just hits the crap out the baseball. He he, well, I mean, he already pay, plays in like a tiny stadium, so yeah. But right field, he would just be such a he'd be like oh, such a short porch merchant. Since 2018, it's a 21 percent barrel percentage. That's, That's not when he plays in the A's. When he give up Miguel and Duhar. He also has like a 40 percent. Oh yeah, now nah, future future Ranger Miguel and Duhar, bros. Let's get it. I don't <laughs> care who. I don't care, bro. I just want to see this man in another uniform. I can't. See this man. All right, I feel like that's enough Yankees talk. Yeah, we we talked so much that's about random bullshit. You're fucking biased piece of you know you're biased. No, I'm kidding. Uh, as, as do I, I don't have to. Do I have to pull out the book? Also, stop talking shit about my my Yankees hat. I love this hat. Um. Like Did anyone say anything line. about it? Yeah. <laughs> no, people on uh, the fucking comments. That's hilarious. Yeah. No, that, that's hilarious. I love it. I, 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 that's hilarious. Yeah, I know you love it, but it's a bit, you know, you're not me, right? So, whatever. Um, <laughs> hey, God. <laughs> I, I have so seen, I have seen no it. comments about the hat. What? I've seen no, no comments probably about DMs, the hat. Probably his DMs. Probably his DMs. Never seen a comment? There are a bunch. Or they're, 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 they're on live or, or message. I don't know. I'm entirely sure. I get, I get a fucking... Fuck kind of messages, which I try to answer. But um, anyways, I guess to sort of conclude our right field list. Uh, Jackson, do you have it? Yeah. Well, I, I need to know I can send it. I can send a couple it. I can things. Send it. No, I have most well, I was, of it. I'll say something quick, real quick different. Do you see any potential risers going forward? Yes, Shumsky. If he has another year like he did in 2019. Oh, and I do go too. Oh, and Ver- well, I don't well, know if he's, he's because yeah. Uh, well, he could move to center field and gain some positional value there, but I'd also say Kepler. If Kepler can go back to what he was in 2019, he's going to rise. I, I put him right. I have, and I have Soto, two, of course. I have two rises. Oh yeah, Soto. Who are your two rises? And Judge too. Judge can. Be I have Soto. Uh, Hanniger. If he comes back and plays well again, he'll be top ten. Mm-hmm. And Kyle Tucker, who if he can replicate that again, then I think he can be top seven probably. Yeah, especially if especially if Gallo moves positions. If if Gallo, Gallo, if no Gallo Gallo he's gonna get traded this year probably. They're, why would you? They're, if they keep him, they're not stupid enough to keep him for that long. They're gonna trade him. Yeah, especially it's since the they Rangers, are. Though. Yeah, but the Rangers but, have but, been really smart. They've, lately. they've been smart. They've been amazing lately. They're not gonna do it now. They're gonna do it at the deadline. It's gonna make. They're gonna do it at the deadline, and he'll go. I think the best destination for him right now is probably like it, it could be either be like St. Louis. Um, I have I have faith in the Rangers now because they completely destroyed the White Sox in the lane trade. So, yeah, well, even the White, Sox, even the White Sox, the White Sox make a lot of sense for sale. It was not one for one. They got a prospect in six years of. It's also six, 
Lynn for uh, Dunning. Could, and and some like left-handed prospect, some dude. Yeah. But I I think Gallo will be going to a central team. I don't I see that because they have a lot of offensive issues. I, I he would make so much sense with the White Sox because if you put him in left field, he's a, or center field. You know, you put him in left field because Robert's there. You'd have him playing left field and Eloy moves to DH. Um, and yeah, and, and team, right and starting right fielder Adam Eaton every day, right? Oh wait, no, you wait. Could you? Uh, I forget. Is the positional adjustment <laughs> harder on uh, right field or left field? Because you just put it's Gallo the same. Your, it's the oh, same. okay. So, uh, yeah, they're just they're fine. That Gallo's better than uh, whatever they have in left field right now. So, yeah, and Jimenez just moves to DH. All right, uh, All right. Jack. What is our cumulative top ten? All right, so number one, we have unanimous first place right field. Go backwards. Mookie Betts. Why would I go backwards? The more intrigues at the end. Yeah, no, there's no spec. We all know who's one and two and three, basically. It's gonna be like well, we Betts, all know one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven because we kind exactly. of all agreed. Yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah, I like it. The so tied for second is Aaron Judge and Juan Soto at 34 points. Not too shabby. At four is Ronald Acuna Jr., five, Bryce Harper, six, Conforto, and now seven is Joey Gallo. Let's go. Eight is Max Kepler. Nine is Mike Yastrzemski. And we have a tie at 10 with Alex Verdugo and Kyle Tucker. Good with Kyle Tucker. Anyways, that concludes you our the only person who put that um, yeah, yeah, he put Tucker so high that he it's got him in the top It's the same thing that happened with low. Cole. Cole only got one because Jack messed up DeGrom and put him at three. Anyways. anyways <laughs> uh, Jack is always fucking up the list. Anyways. <laughs> anyways. 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 Uh, make sure to leave us a comment on our recent post where we'll probably uh, on our post on Instagram at Deep Drive Pod. Uh, if you want to. At Deep underscore Drive underscore Pod. Excuse me. If you want to uh, debate about that. So. That's it for right fielders. Moving into our next segment of today's podcast, we have our trivia. I'm absolutely destroying Ryan. There's no point in it. There's no point in it. I don't even know what the score is anymore. It was like, I up on like 16, 16 to 5. Or is it 14 to 5? It's one of I the think I, like Jack does drugs, so I win. And man, what the fuck? Who did the drugs? People actually think I'm doing drugs. I didn't write it down last time, but it, it's bad. It's in the docs. I'm getting blown out. Next time, because James will actually be competent and remember. Anyway, Fuck off. For today. All right. Uh, Jack, your easy question is very easy. I'm sorry, Ryan. Uh, who hit Who hit the first home run of the 2020 regular season? He doesn't know this. He doesn't know this, and I do. How is this easy? Well, I think we do know this. I do know no, this. No, don't say it. Oh, I don't say it. make it. Stand, stand, stand. Yeah, see, you made it, like, really No, obvious. I didn't make it obvious. He sh- you, you I would have remembered. I was, like, thinking. Yeah, so you would have known it. All right, yeah. Ryan, your easy uh-huh. question. Colton Wong won back-to-back gold glove awards at second base in 2019 and 2020. I'm not going to know this. Who was the last AL second baseman to win the award in back-to-back seasons? Second baseman? So no other yes. position? Yeah, what award? The gold glove award. The um, only award Colton Wong has ever won. He's just mad because he's not a cub, bro. Chill, 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 chill. chill. Uh, I, I got to actually think about this one. Uh, I'm not going to – how do I not know this? How do I not know good defensive second baseman? American League only. Yeah, I know. It's because the only two I can think of are Wong and Frazier uh, for some reason. Uh, and the DJ was in the NL when he won his. Um, he wasn't very good defensively this year, so no. Uh I'm thinking a little bit because I need to think of the last team in the AL Central for some reason. It's not an AL Central team. I just have to think. Uh, was it like in the last 20 years? Yeah. So it's okay. I don't have to go back too far. Okay, good. Uh, is It's also a popularity contest. So it's not even the best defense. Fuck. Um, um, yeah, like Derek Jeter. Was, was that Altuve? No. no. How do you not know this? I don't. <laughs> I only know the answer because I he was the first guy that came to mind because he just retired recently. Mm-hmm. Pedroia, I hate you. I hate you. I hate you so much. I forgot how I forgot he played for. So, but so no other second baseman has. Wow, second I baseman suck. Fifteen or was it 2013-14? I didn't write it down. I I just that stripped that. Ago? I stripped that question straight from MLB.com. That's that's fake. not fair. That's not that's nowhere near as easy as Jackson. That's a medium question. To, to medium. That was not a medium question. <laughs> I knew the 
question yes, right. I knew the question right off the bat. All right, this one I might was going to say Pedroia, but I wasn't sure. This one might be a little hard, but uh, who was the first player from the 2018 MLB draft to reach the big leagues? 2018. Because nobody has reached it from 2019. And only Garrett Crochet reached it from 2020. 2018. 2018. Who was drafted in 2018? Me. Only one player, right? This, Yeah, and it's a first-round pick, if that helps you. First-round pick. Andre Iguodala. <laughs> you know, the only 2018 draft member I really care about is the greatest quarterback of all time. So, you know, that's all I'm saying. Baker Mayfield. Is it a... I want to say this guy, but I don't know if it's him. Just say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Just want to think a bit more before say it, I say it. 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 If you don't say it, uh, you, you're telling you, you're telling kids to do drugs. Say it. <laughs> and I would just slip my mind. No, 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 no. I remember. I remember. Uh, almost done thinking about it. Domingo Herman. <laughs> <laughs> then, all right, I'm torn between two players. So I don't know when they're drafted. Dave Garcia. Send it. Is it Nico Horner? Yes. Oh, oh, oh was the other hold player on. Casey Mize that you were thinking of? Hold no. On. Okay. There's like eight players that have made the big leagues. I said no, first. The first. First. Oh. Let's go. Oh. He was the first That's one because he made it at the end of 2019 when Javi Baez oh, was yeah. hurt, and then Addison yes. Russell took a ball to the face. And also, you know, got mm-hmm. blackballed deservingly. Anyways, go ahead. All right. Question. I'm not going to know this, by the way. George Springer is tied for fourth all time with 19 career postseason home runs. Who's first? It's not. Is it? Is it? It might be him. I'm thinking. Because it has to be just someone who's played so long in the postseason. And I think I know. Wait, is it first or just tied? Is, wait, no. What? No, this person who's first is like far and away first, I think. It's not the guy who I thought it was then, because it's it's not him then. Uh, it's he another guy. <sighs> I feel like I should know this. Jack, J- Jack, uh, can you do me a favor and not get this right? Thanks. Can uh, you do me a favor and unmute yourself so I know you're not Googling this? I am unmuted. No, I'm talking about Jack. Oh. Yeah. He is unmuted as well. He just can't hear him for I some reason. Second there. Oh. Um, it's got to be a Yankee. Is this guy Probably. from like you know like the nineteen fourteen or like nineteen ten or? Whatever? Is it post to pre? Is it post integration? Oh wait, that's too much for me to ask. Uh, okay, but before integration, there was no postseason, just the World Series. Oh yeah, that's true. Oh yeah, so it has. It's got to be a Yankee. Uh, it's got to be a Yankee. Uh, is it? Good. Mm, I think I might know this. Mm, it can't be him. It can't, is it? Uh, is I'm really surprised you don't know this. I'm really surprised I don't know this. I have one guess, but it's the only guess, and it's only. I only of- have one. I have two guesses. All right, say your one guess. Come on, let's go. Yeah. I was gonna say at first. Uh, I was gonna say uh, Jeter, but it's, it's not, not him. Jeter. Jeter is third with twenty. Yeah, he has a ton because he just played a lot. Jeter has 734 postseason plate appearances, which is yeah. the most all time, I think. Yeah. No, that was his guess. All right. I'm full sending it here because of Jackson. Oh, I think you got it. No, it's uh, Manny Ramirez. What? I would not have gotten that. How many games did he play in the postseason? Oh my I, God. I don't know, but he has 29 home runs in 493 what? plate appearances. Jesus Christ. Oh, well, it's the PEDs talking. I mean, that's just how the Red Sox won in 04 anyways. It's, it's a Mickey Mouse ring, so I don't really care. Yeah, it's okay. I don't really care about 04. All right. We're talking about championships. I'm talking about decades. Here's, so. here's another one stripped straight from MLB.com. Mm-hmm. Elvis Andrews finished second in, in American League Rookie of the Year voting during his rookie season. Who won the award? Who the, how the fuck am I supposed to know this one? It's 2009, I think, by the way, if that helps you. Oh, that'll probably help a lot. <laughs> American is it right. is it is it 2009? Well, what team did he play for? A- uh, Andrews, the Rangers. Yeah, oh. I, d- I, d- I said American League, but I want spaces. I want to see what they look like. Do you know the answer, Brian? 
No, I have no idea. I'm just looking at my what my faces look like. They're like black. Kind of weird. It's like rubber pellets. Rookies in 2009. I feel bad for anyone who's watching the video pod and has to see what Ryan just did. <laughs> I'm sorry. I want to see what my faces look like. They're like black. <laughs> like rubber. They, they, they don't hurt. They're just so squishy. I want to like poke them out. Just don't watch the video. It's not that hard. <laughs> Why are you? Is this somebody I'm supposed to know, Jackson? No, you, I know who it is. Cause well, I, but sure. you wouldn't. You wouldn't know. Um, at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, um, I don't know. But I'm, give me one second. I'm gonna guess. Um, was it Verlander? In 2009? I don't know when he started pitching. I, oh, in like 2004. No, it was like 06. It was 06, yeah. That was really bad. Anyways, go ahead. Ryan, steal it and make me sad. I'm going to, I'm going to, no, I actually don't know this. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> was it like Jacoby Ellsbury? <laughs> uh, no. It okay. was, it was Andrew Bailey, who is, who know. is an Oakland reliever. Athletics reliever. I know. He was a beast that year. And here's a question that came from Jackson. Okay. In 1986, Texas Ranger Pete, I'm not even going to try and pronounce this, Incaviglia set a new world record for striking out 185 times in his rookie season. Whose record does he did he break? Meaning who? Reggie Jackson. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's a strikeout king. Yeah. Uh, that was not hard at all. That was extremely easy. Yeah, I think thanks for that. Gee, I would have gotten that too. That was one of the easiest questions. That was easier than any other question you asked me. You can make that one. Okay, that was not the easiest question. That I is the easiest you. question there's, you've ever asked. There's he's no the, way he's that... literally has the most. He literally has the most strikeouts of all time. He's a strikeout king. That yeah, but cool. like Manny Ramirez has the most postseason homers of all time. Okay, he's the he's the postseason homer king. You should know that. Yeah, but he's but he also right. is known for hitting a ton of home runs. I'm getting absolutely finessed by the system here. Uh, <laughs> That'll do it for me. You, you got so, ask the easiest question in the world. So what? You got five and four. Ryan yeah. wins five four. So we'll add that's whatever the hell the score was before. I just want to say I want to thank my I can't family. Hear you. You're uh, too far away. Me. Oh, I was gonna say I want to thank my family for you know putting me on this beautiful earth. Uh, I want to thank God for you know giving me the chance to. Uh, You're win still today. losing by a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank. I want to thank. I want to. Um. I want to thank. Uh. I want to thank uh, Reggie Jackson for not being able to put the fucking bat on the ball. Uh. And I want to thank uh, Dustin Pedroia for being a little bitch and taking so long to win dump, uh, set gold gloves. And I want to thank DJ oh. Leu for not, not winning any gold gloves because I wouldn't have guessed him because he – I don't know. Uh, what else was I going to guess? Um, yeah, we need the one ratio. Yeah, no, that's all, I have to, all the people I have to thank. Also, thank you, Jack, for not being good at this game. Moving on to today's uh, last section of today's podcast, we're going to be talking about our ratio. We only have one ratio because it was so good and I was involved and Ryan thought of it. Today's ratio uh, revolves around – um, Trevor Bauer's wonderful agent, Rachel Luba. Ryan, why don't you take it from here? Well, let's bring up this lovely ratio. So, uh, Jack tweeted, your clients uh, are a rapist and a sexist, and I won't go as far as racist, but others certainly, ha- well, others certainly have. And then Rachel Luba, this lovely agent, uh, known for representing um, uh, just fantastic clients, fantastic people. Uh, this is libel and, patent- and patently false. You should do more research before throwing around ma- wor- words like that. And then someone tweeted back, uh, and I suggest you follow his account at Bets fan, underscore fan club. Love that guy. Uh, he said, so you're saying these articles are false with articles of Puig's um, alleged sexual battery. Uh, and she was ratioed. Not only did she get ratioed to 81 to 94, but she also had 207 t- retweets or quote tweets. That's really bad. That's really, really bad. She didn't even ratio Jack. Jack got 117 likes and she only got 84, I believe it was. Let me double check. 80, yes. Yeah, 81, excuse me, 81. So you failed to ratio a random 17-year-old, I guess now? You're 17, right? 17-year-old. And oh, yeah. yeah. And then the other account was some other random person on the internet as well. So yeah, no. Uh, but, you know, she does represent amazing clients, uh, you know, amazing clients, uh, respecters of uh, people in society, of course. You know, she would never, never, ever try to empower women in sports and then hire people who, are, who are, have clients who are totally against that. No, Rachel Luba, not in her character. She she respects women's and minorities. She's the best at respecting women at minorities. She also got ratioed 
in about seven other replies. Yeah, no, she gets ratioed all the time. The funniest part about No, I mean to the same tweet. Her, her initial tweet was about her not being uh, – people didn't like her because of who she represents. And she said it's just because of her looks. Because <laughs> she's fucking stupid. Well, it's stupid. true, though. Because she respects women more than anyone I've ever met. No one, again, no one respects women more than Rachel Luba. No and then she blocked me, which was not great because now I. That's all, no, it's, it's actually great. You know, I don't have to hear about that fucking. No, you know what I'm talking about. Momentum, didn't you that. follow her on the burner? I had to because I wanted to see where Bauer was going to go, which I didn't need to because Sauce God John Haven came. Yeah, through that was amazing. Party. He stole that shit from Bauer, which got me very hyped out. Anyways, and he did it before the video. He wanted to drop it in the video. He came and dropped it for him. And then he, had, he apologized like all Mets fans. He looks so yeah. dumb, bro. I'm sorry. That's hilarious. Yeah, sure and during the Super Bowl. You would put like four signed hat giveaways for like four different teams. Like dude. I'm telling you, what happened was he started doing it to make it seem like he was trolling, but he knew it was a leak. And so he kept trying to change it to try to like joke around. Um, but he got caught in broad daylight getting it leaked. And the fact that he had these shirts ready is kind of sad. It's kind of sad. He didn't know where he was going to go. No one really won't. I, he, he, the Mets and Dodgers, I mean, those are – those are two good franchises to go to right now because they're two really good teams. But I mean, oh anyway, my God. today's uh, ratio portion. Uh, fuck Rachel Luba, fuck Trevor Bauer, fuck all of them. Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback of all time. Anyone who says otherwise is a liar and an idiot, and do not listen to them about football. Okay. Cutting that out. Cutting that out. Didn't you say that Rogers was better about? Three I said weeks Rogers ago? was better Cutting because I didn't know what PFF was. Cutting it all out. Anyways, thank you. All right. Thanks for watching today's podcast. If you like what you saw, leave a five-star rating. Go follow us on Instagram and Twitter at deep underscore drive underscore podcast. Um, go follow the, the Jackson's YouTube, Dell's Films. You can watch this whole thing with our face cams. If you want to see our beautiful faces. Uh, make sure to follow me on Instagram at Apple Leaners if you aren't already. Make sure to follow Ryan on Instagram, I'm sorry, Twitter at Ryan Garcia ESM. Also follow his uh, Yankee Stat Talk page, Yankee Stat Talk. At the end of the day, it's been a deep drive to the left field by Castellanos, and we'll see you next time. And no, fuck, and we are gone. I don't even get the intro. Whatever. You guys are going to see all that.